Hello and welcome everybody to Power Apps for Kids January 2022. Now I'm going to get this in really early. Power Apps for Kids is not just for kids. Uh, and anyone that's seen the previous session should know that the stuff we do is really, really cool. And I think it is the only place that I can think where we would get to really see the sort of apps that we're going to see today. But don't be fooled. These things that we do aren't for kids. They're, they're cool because they're for kids. But the things that you learn from doing them are uh, are really neat. So welcome everybody who is joining the session uh, with myself and Peter Veenstra, your hosts. Um, today we are joined by April Dunham and Peter LaRue. Uh, April Dunham is, oh let me get this straight, hey, now try to test me here. Now April Dunham is from Microsoft and she is Definitely got advocate in the word in her name. It's it's a power platform and community and no advocate. We have power platform developer advocates. Yeah, so I oh, lead developer our advocate. uh, power platform advocacy team. Yep. And and essentially, it's your role is to bring people to the platform. Yeah, exactly. I like to say it's like one of the, the best jobs that I think you could have at, here at Microsoft, right? So, you know, we have our wonderful MVPs in the community. So it's like very kind of similar mantras, right? So my, my goal is just to reach as many people as possible of all ages and get them interested in the Power Platform, make sure they have all of the knowledge and material they need to get started and foster that community. And I think the reason why this specifically it's important to have the word developer in front of it is because in particular you know we're doing something which is parents for kids which arguably kids are citizen developers but you you kind of come at it from the developer angle the kind of traditional uh, people that learned how to develop using all of the you know the languages you know c sharp and net and god knows what and um, so and I think this is a story that we will see over the next few years uh, of I hope that we will see these two worlds starting to get closer and closer together. So uh, April is obviously, you know, it's on you, April. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, it's all it's what we call a fusion development, right? It's like everyone working together using the tools of their choices yeah. um, with low code and full code to, you know, to build solutions and build cool things. Brilliant. And uh, so we, we normally talk with Py, my power apps. Uh, I've, I've shortened it um, every session now to just say power apps are cool. We like making them. <laughs> And yep. in this session, we're going to show you why. Um, in the last session, we had uh, a little girl called Akshita, and she, uh, oh, crikey, which she did this um, app which allowed us to, um, oh, can you remember it, uh, Leo, the, um, the, ses the session she did? Because she had flow in it as well, didn't she? It was to do with a shopping list, I think. The shopping list, but she also had it so that it emailed the shopping list back to you once you'd created it. Now, that was a really kind of neat thing because we hadn't used Power Automate before. Um, we also have Pranav, and she and he did this uh, this session where he showed you how um, you could build up this list to say that you did good things, and because you'd done good things, you then got presents as a result of that. And it was done through an approvals process using Power Automate. It was really, really good. Um, and then finally, we had um, Craig Gregory, who <laughs> who showed us this app where he's got these elves, go <laughs> elves kind of going across the top, <laughs> across the bottom as well. You've seen it before, haven't you? <laughs> and all of the elves look the same, but you're supposed to click on them. And he's got three speeds and it was all a bit crazy. And the longer um, the longer Craig talks about it, the more he starts laughing and the more I start laughing as well. Um, so that was last session. This session, uh, we can do a resources reminder, but I'm not going to anymore. You know, powerappsforkids.com, head over there. It's awesome. So in this session, we will start with April, and she's going to do this Wordle game. And I think it's fair to say you've tried to mimic Wordle as far as you can. So I'll say no more than that. Um, and then we've got, uh, we will have Peter LaRue, he, who is going to show us this Dialogo communication game, which is a 
really fascinating game. So, Peter, you are from the Scouts of South Africa, and uh, and he's uh, built a game which I think uses some principles from this Dialogo game, which allows people to communicate with each other about difficult topics more easily. It's really, really neat. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Um, and uh, at the end, we'll have Leo's survey and then we will um, we will close off. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and I'm going to pass over to April. I'm going to sit back and relax and do nothing for the next 25 minutes other than think of Wordle. Over to you, April. Awesome. Thank you, Roy. Cool. So let me get my screen share going here. So as Roy kind of already said, I tried with the Power Apps Wordle application to really mimic as closely as possible as I can the real life Wordle app. So let me kind of move that over. There we go. So we can see the screen. So what you're looking at right now is actually not the real order. This is the world that I recreated inside of a Power Apps Canvas app. So um, I try to mimic it as closely as possible. You see when we have the screen load up here, it's giving us the instructions on how it works. So we get six tries, just like the real life game here to be able to guess the word. And we have all the color coding and everything in place. So I'm using some pop-up boxes here. Um, so what I love about this particular application and going through and really trying to recreate Wordle and Power Apps is it shows the power of what you can do with the UI inside of Power Apps and how you can really customize it and make it look like a true application that you use. So once we get past this pop-up here, now we can actually start playing the game. So I'm just going to do a quick demo so that we can see and that it works just like Wordle. So I'm going to put a word in one of the words that I love to start with just because I love the word is power. So that's a good root word because you get some vowels in there and everything, right? So you can see we have the color coding in there. So I know that the O is one of the correct words from on the right space. So I can try to guess what the word would be here. So I don't know if anyone wants to give me any suggestions or anything in the chat of what word I should try next, but we can kind of run through the app and I'll show you how I implemented some of this. So I know there's an O somewhere. So let's see, uh, maybe I'll try, Oh. Well, no, longest, it's only four letters. Can we go with co coast? Coast, because I want to get another. Oh, one. no, that's not very good, is it? Because it's got the, oh, anyway, we'll do it anyway. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a good one. But, right? we, but we know the O words. isn't in a, oh, that's not. Oh, that good. turned out to be a good one. So we know okay. that there's, we got two more letters out of that. So that's really great. So we just need to find out the right place. So let's see, any other suggestions from, from the audience here? I'll just have a quick fun game. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Oasis, wow, that Oasis. is a good one. That's I a great one, let's, let's try that. Oasis, oh, okay. okay. So we know the S is at the oh, end. Oh, we got an I as well. So we got, no, oh no, okay. we, got, we have all the letters, oh. have we not? We have all the letters, you're just not in the right place, right, okay. Right, this okay, is, I'm confused now. I'm very confused then. <laughs> what, <laughs> what is this word? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, we can't end in two S, no, actually, is this, yeah. have, we, have we beaten the system? <laughs> I guess so. I'm so confused of what this word is. So, you know, I'm just going to, I'm curious what it is because it will tell me at the end. I'll just repeat the word because it is going to let me repeat it since I don't know and I don't want to waste a bunch of time on yeah, what yeah, the yeah. word is because I want to show you. There we go. Okay, so I didn't get anything right. Um, and you see, I can play again and I have yeah. all the sharing and everything. So now the word was adios. Oh, okay. Oh my so goodness. Goodbye. See, oh I don't my. Guess that. that's, not, that's not even <laughs> fair, is it? I know, right? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, that was a tough one. That was interesting. That was um, good. One of the things, yeah, so. What, why would we want to create something like this in Power Apps? So A, we can extend it. So if we love a game like Wordle, right? What if we wanted to make the game our own? Or what if we wanted to add something simple? Like, what does adios mean? I can click on that information icon and I can go like maybe I can add a functionality to get the definition of the word, right? I can add in little pieces um, of cool functionality to the app. So that'd be something we could do. So this is kind of the working um, app. You see that I have all the settings where we can switch to a dark mode if you're a dark mode fan um, and have the colors and the theme change. And we have the colorblind mode as well that we can have it changes wow. the colors accordingly in the grid. So everything that we can do there in Wordle, we can go back and always see our statistics of you know, how many we've got right and all that. And I even built in the sharing as well 
um, and that'll actually automatically tweet out your score. And it has a little grid like um, that you see when you share your results. So how did I tackle doing this? Well, the first big thing that I had to figure out is how am I gonna get this list of words, right? So we need pretty much a, a big bank of five little words that we can guess here. So I went out to the internet and I ended up finding this gigantic list of, I think, you know, over 30,000 or more words. Now these are just a bunch of words in the English dictionary, not just five little words. So if you just scroll through this, you see I can pretty much scroll and I'm, almost 5,000 word in, uh, in and I'm still in the A's, right? So this is a gigantic list that I found. So the first thing that I had to figure out is, well, how do I pair this list down to only the five other words so I can get a good base of words to work with? So that's what I did in this spreadsheet. So I took all the words here and I just did a little uh, filter on the link. You see what I'm doing here. Just This is not a power up tip, but it's just a nifty Excel tip, which actually kind of is a Power Apps tip in a way because you know Power Apps the the formulas that we write are based off of Excel. So this is a great tip to learn. Um, I used a formula called Link in um, Excel here, and I'm getting the length of the words in this word bank that I found. And then I just filtered this table on all the words that are a length of five, so that now I can have my five letter word bank here. And now I can use this in my Power App to randomly get a word. So that's how I the first thing that I had to figure out before I even started building the UI and all that in my application. Once I had that, I went into the Power Apps. So here we are in our edit mode of our application. And I went to our data tab. So I need to get in my bank of words. So I went to add data. And since my words are never gonna change, I just searched for Excel and I imported my bank of words directly from that Excel spreadsheet. So I pointed it right there to this five little words Excel. And now I have all of those, I think it's still like close to 30,000 uh, five letter words in the database of English words. So now I can use inside of my app. Once I have that, now I had to figure out, well, how am I going to make it give me a random five letter word when I load up the application? So that's where we use this nifty formula. So if I just zoom in a little bit here, I'm going to use a function called rand between. So I know in my Excel spreadsheet that I have, in this case, 15,918 words, five letter words that we could choose from. So I want this, when I load up the application, to give me any random number between one and 15,918. So that's gonna go get that number and then it's gonna look up in my Excel sheet. So that's why I have these ID columns here and it's gonna find the word that matches that random number that the app just got for me. So that's going to go out and find up the random word here with this lookup function. So I'm gonna put that in a variable with my set function. We're gonna look up in my words table and find the ID that matches my random ID that I just generated. And now I can start playing world. So it's really as simple as that uh, to get that information. Now there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes too that I won't get too into the weeds here on how we're going to go and get the letters that we guess. So really all we're doing is we're using collections. And I'm sure that in other sessions that we've had here, we've talked about collections and how that's a way to store data locally um, uh, inside like tabular data inside of your Power Apps. So every time I press one of these buttons, um, on the screen here, like this right here, like this bar. Every time I press that, it's gonna add into a collection of letters that I've guessed. And it's going to be able to look across the letters that I've guessed and be able to do the color coding to know like if I've already guessed uh, roads, for example, that those need to be highlighted and the colors need to be changed. So if the R is in my collection of letters I've guessed, but yet it's not in the word, that is, I'm trying to guess, then it should be black. But if it is in a collection of letters that I guessed, and it also is in the word that I'm trying to guess, then it should be yellow. And then green if it's in the right spot. So that's really all I'm doing is leveraging these collections and comparing what I've guessed versus the word that we found on the OnStar there. And I'm seeing if they match and I'm doing some color coding. And we can see what the formula looks like on our uh, keypad here. If we look at the fill, this is where I'm checking. So I'm using a function called switch. So I wanna look and say if 
my collection of guest letters is correct because when I click on a letter, I'm going out and I'm doing some logic and I'm saying, okay, does this letter exist in the word I'm guessing? If so, that's a correct letter. So I want the color to change accordingly. Now this one gets a little tricky because you remember how I added in the colorblind mode? So I need to also be able to check, well, do they have that enabled? Because if so, I need a different color to be shaded in there, whether it's colorblind mode or regular mode. So I'm also going to do an if to check if it's the correct letter. If colorblind mode is on, it needs to be green. Um, if it's um, off, then it needs to be orange. Okay. And then if it's the wrong letter, then I just want it to be gray. But if it's the right letter, but the wrong location, then I need it to be these colors, whether or not you have the color blind mode enabled. And this is one of my favorite things that I love about the Power Apps uh, formula editor is it gives you this preview of the color. So I don't have to know what all these color values are. I can see that the intest my formula is right by seeing that preview of the color. So that's really all I'm doing there in the color coding. And I'm doing the same color coding on the letters that I guess here on um, in the tabs. And all these are, if we look, are labels. So I wanted to make sure that people couldn't cheat and type in these directly. So you notice if I click on that, it's just a label that's kind of formulated like a text box so that no one can cheat and type something in there. They have to use my keypad. And I'm just color coding my labels. And the keypad, if you notice, is built just using a series of button controls. So all of these are individual buttons. So if you go to insert, um, input, and button, I put a bunch of those here on the screen and I just formatted them. I adjusted the border radius and some of these properties we're seeing on the right hand side in the properties pane and the color coding to make it look kind of like a, a keypad here where I can, and a keyboard that I can enter in that information. Now, how is it going and like checking to make sure that what I enter is actually in the word? Well, that's all here on this enter button. So that's where all the magic happens. If we look at this enter buttons on select property, this is where I'm doing all the complex logic. Now, you see, if we scroll down, this is a really crazy amount of Power Apps formulas going on in this. So i uh, not going to overwhelm, but just a high level overview of what we're doing is we're going and we're looking and seeing what was submitted. And we're going to, and I tried to, so one of the things you'll notice, which is really good to do when you're working on something that's complex like this, is to use comments. So it's a way to document what you're doing here. And that's what this green stuff is that you're seeing. So I have comments letting me know that the first step is to validate that the submitted word is valid. And I'm reminding myself what I'm doing because if I build this and I go back um, a few months later, I might forget how I actually implemented this. So it gives me a nice reminder of what I was thinking and doing when I was writing all of this formulas and everything. So if the word doesn't exist, so that's one of the things I built in it. Um, like we have in Wordle, you, you don't want to let someone submit a word that isn't an actual word that doesn't exist in the English dictionary. So I'm actually going to check against my database of words that I uploaded. And if they just submitted a gibberish word, then it's going to tell them and notify them that that word is not in the list and to try again. But if it passed that and it's a valid word, then what I want to do is start a counter because remember, we only get um, six attempts here. So we don't want to let them be able to try more than six times to guess the word. So how are we going to limit that? Well, I'm going to create a variable that's a counter. So every time they submit and enter a guess, I'm going to add to that counter. And once they hit six, I'm going to make it where they can't guess anymore. So I'm going to do a switch on that counter once I have it. And then I'm going to go, and this is the bulk of what's happening here. I'm going to look through all the letters that they've guessed, and I'm using a function called with because I need to be able to look up inside of my collection of letters in my word bank and see if that exists. Another important thing I'm doing here is uh, this lookup is case sensitive. So if my word bank is all in lowercase, but the words I'm submitting are in uppercase, there might be some issues looking it up. So I'm just making sure that everything I'm comparing is the same by using this function called upper. 
Then I'm going to go through all this collection. I'm going to look to see if it exists. And I'm just going to output in my uh, collection for each row. So there's going to be six rows. There's going to be a collection of the word that was guessed. And that's where I'm putting on, is this the correct spot? Is it not in the word? Or is it correct, but in the wrong spot? And I'm just going through and doing that. And I'm putting in a color spot, a corresponding color to that. So if it's correct, it's green. If it's incorrect, it's black. And if it's correct but in the wrong location, it's yellow. Because that's going to be used when we go to share our score. And we're just repeating that for each row that we guess, pretty much. So that's why it's so long, is because all of this code is repeating six times. Now, Can that's really you, the bulk of it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You already saw your every hand raised. So. Yeah, so yeah. could you show me the collections that exist within this app? And I know we only get yep. to see the first five rows and so on. Um, yes. So we've got, so, okay, so we've got, one collection for each row. Okay, can I have a look at one of those then? Yep, so like here's okay. the, the first one I, I guess. So we're, we're the color right here, because again, that's used for yeah. sharing. We have the ID of the position of where yeah. it is. We have the outcome of was this correct or incorrect. And then we have the actual text of what that is. So it spells out C roads was the first yeah. uh, word that I guessed. Brilliant. And, and obviously yeah. you have uh more than one you have lots of those and the reason why they're yep. not populated is because we've yep. we've we have a guest, yeah. we're at a reset stage and then cold guest letters oh that's that's probably to say well actually you've used all these and yeah so these are all the ones so the reason why there's different so i need one for each row to do the color coding per row that i've guessed yeah but i also need to control that number pad so that's what this cold guest letters is it's just every because you can guess yeah. Uh, the same letter multiple times, right? So I want to store that collection um, in here of, of letters that I've guessed. Okay, and that final one, that the call letters, is that the one for the... Oh, that is... Uh, the, those are like just like all the letters that are available, so I can compare the guessed ones yeah. versus the ones that haven't been guessed. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Yep, no problem. And um, this one is one that I have not um populated yet or this is the place because one of the things that i did so when we play wordle um you know it's limited to where you can only play it once a day is kind of the intention but i wanted to be able to play this more often so if you notice i have this reset um option after uh, right here so i can just play as many times as i want and it'll give me a new word to guess so that's what the the collection of plays is is it's storing um my history of all of the times that i've played and how many wins that i've had and that's going to yeah. be stored in a collection in this one. Uh, yeah, so that, that's what's going on there. And um, well, you know, one of the things that I haven't did yet um, that I have to figure out is, you know, there's a hard mode inside of Wordle where it doesn't let you, um, you have to use the guess it gives you. So if it tells me that there's an O in the middle of the word, every other one of my subsequent guesses has to have the O in the spot that it says. So I haven't quite figured that piece out in the power app yet. That's like on my version two of this to figure out is how to, to lock it down. But I'll use that toggle uh, for that when I'm ready. Um, yeah, I and mean, that, that's the, the basics of it. And then, you know, I, I have my, my help text here, um, the question where it just pops up and reminds me how to play the game. Um, I have all of my stats where I can again, play again um, and see my streak and, and all that. And that's all being calculated again based off of that collection of the plays that I have. So that's really all there is to the Wordle game. It's um, you know, a little bit of complex formulas, but it's just really fun to kind of match the styles and everything and the colors. And when you get down to it, it's very simple. You just put a bunch of labels on the screen, you put some buttons for your inputs and uh, get a good bank of letters and do some comparisons and you're and you're good to go. And, and people can download this uh, app, can't they? Yes, um, it is on the PNP. So if you go to aka.ms forward slash power platform samples, I did make it available right here. Um, so you can go and download that and install it and play it. And if you make any changes or customizations that you want too. Yeah. yeah.
That is really neat. And and it's a, it's effectively a standalone app in terms of Yeah. Yeah, that's really that's require... the great thing. You don't have to install anything else. It's just all um, you know, the the, the database is, is in, in the application. So there's no dependencies or anything. Yeah. So um so the just to remind everyone again, the address is aka.ms forward slash is it power platforms power apps, hyphen samples. samples. Yeah. Yep. Go for it. Uh fantastic. That's awesome. lovely. I think you've blown my brain up a little bit there. <laughs> Uh, and I need the chance probably yeah. to just, you know, those images that you got there, little, you know, because that that graphic, yeah. Mm -hmm. is Where did you get that from then? These are, yeah. So these don't look like, if you notice, any of the out-of-the-box icons that we have in Power Apps. Yeah. They look a little bit different. So what I'm using here are SVGs. Oh. So um, I actually, what I did, you know, and you got to be careful when you do this, um, but I inspected Wordle's site, right? And I, yeah. I kind of looked at their HTML. Okay. They were using an SVG for that. So I copied that and I used that in my Power App. But you want to make sure that, you know, you're oh, not go on. Show anyone's work. Yeah, obviously, right? Go on, show um, us that bit. I'm too excited now. So you went to Wordle. Yeah. So let's see, like Wordle, what was the there we go? Yeah. So this is okay. using something. So your browser, so it, all modern web browsers, so whether you're you know using Edge or Chrome or whatever you're using, have this baked in. So if I want to know like what this is, what I can do is I can right-click on it and I can say inspect. So here's how I figured out what they were doing. So I can kind of hover over this little gear icon. Oh, you're kidding and me. And see that it, here's all the HTML, the, the source code of how they built Wordle. And I can see that's just so, an SVG. So you so did a bit wanna, of a, okay, okay yeah. yeah. Edit a oh, edit, God. And then I can copy that over. Copy that. And I just paste that nah, into my image control didn't. inside of Power Apps. And there I had my, my Wordle and do we, uh, replica there. And do we get any issues with little quote marks and so on? I think sometimes yes. we do. So if you notice, if I paste that directly in here, we have double quotes everywhere. So that's the only um, tedious thing that we have to do is we have to go and remove all these if, double if you quotes. Stick it in note, if you stick it in Notepad, mm -hmm. you can just do a control, you know, a fine yes. place, can't you? Yeah. Notepad or Visual Studio Code. That's what I usually do. And I just do a find and replace. And then I'll paste that directly in here. You're but you, need, but you needed this. that. Yeah, you needed the bit yeah. at the start. Yeah, you need that. That This tells basically Power Apps that what you're pasting in is uh, SVG code so that it can render it correctly as an yeah. image for you. Oh, yeah. do you want to copy and paste that little? In fact, copy and paste the the bit that actually works, the the, the bit at the, the top bit and pop that in the chat. I reckon that would be yeah. quite amusing to copy and paste that into your apps. <laughs> be quite a long bit. Absolutely. In Quite a long bit in the chat, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. see how that, that works out there. If you it's coming up to um, Valentine's Day, so if it all gets a bit quiet, you can always just reel off this lot and they'll probably forget. <laughs> all right, there you go. Coming in hot in the chat. So. Fantastic. I'm going to be doing that okay. in a minute when Peter's doing his session. So if my eyes glaze over <laughs> because I'm I'm putting a little cog into my app. That's <laughs> that nice. yeah. What do you think, Leo? impressive hey so cool <laughs> i loved all about it yes. um that was really great isn't it and of course that is not the only way that this app could have been done as as april will know yep. there's just loads of different ways that she could have approached this and you've got to just jump like for example on the um in particular on the on the keypad that you created mm -hmm. you would have been thinking oh should i do it this way or that way or you know, and you've gone down this this particular route and so on. Really interesting. Yeah, um, that, that's the great thing about Power Apps that I love is there's so many different ways um, to build something and it just kind of shows everyone's unique personality and, and how they tackle things um, and, and express themselves through building apps. So we'd love to, to see if anyone else tries to, to build Wordle, how, how you approach it and compare notes. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, April, for that. We are now moving from the United States and we are going to head across to South Africa where we are joined by Peter LaRue. Uh, now, P 
Peter has got a, a fascinating uh, app which allows people to communicate better with each other about what might be difficult subjects. And I have a little play with the app, but I think that it's going to be better for Peter to properly introduce it and why he put it together um, himself. Peter, thank you so much for coming on. Um, and you have the floor. Thanks, Rory. Uh, thanks, Leo. Thanks, Peter. So in, in my spare time, I'm a volunteer with Scout South Africa. And um, this app I'm going to show tonight is something we, we've been working on in the last couple of months. Um, so Scout South Africa, firstly, are there any Cub Scouts, Guards, Brownies, Rangers, Volunteers uh, on, on the chat? Um, if, if you are, you'll, you'll know that the last, uh, ah, congratulations, Brian. Um, you, you'll know over the last um, two years or so, things have been quite different for, for scouting because we've been restricted in what we can do and how we can do things. So Scout South Africa has uh, 190,000 members and, and our, our age groups that we cover are from the ages of five up to 30 in, in five age groups. And we focus on life skills, leadership, empowerment, and all the traditional things you'd think of when you think of scouting, like camping and hiking and being in the outdoors. But we've also been uh, really making sure that we keep up to date with what the needs are of, of people in the world today as things change. And one of those skills that we, we think is very important, both in Scout South Africa and in the, the global movement, is being able to speak to people and especially being able to speak to people you have uh, a different worldview from. So there's a, a, an international program called Dialogue for Peace, where we, we try and train young people around the world to be able to speak to people from different cultures and faiths, and also to be able to speak to people in their community. Um, and during August and September last year, I was part of the, the training team um, for, for this program. And um, we were, it was the first time we delivered the training online. The, the training had normally been happening at, at global conferences, but because nobody could travel for conferences, we ran it online. And part of what we do and the way we work in scouting is we, we teach people skills and then we give them a safe place to practice those skills before they have to go and do them in the real world. So this game, is a part of the way we teach people how to talk to each other and learn from each other. So dialogue doesn't mean I am coming to convince you that I'm right and you're wrong and I win and you lose because I, figure, I, I tell you what's right and you have to, um, you have to learn from me and, and go away agreeing with me. Dialogue is about respecting each other and it's about understanding each other's points of view. So. The way the game works, and I'll, I'll go through the demo now, but just to show that the paper, the paper game is you have three decks of cards, really. And one deck of cards helps you choose a topic to talk about. And then the other two decks of cards, the go, the go deck and the, and the connect deck, the orange deck and the green deck, you use in alternation to, to um, come up with ways, different ways of talking about that topic. So this game, isn't a game where somebody wins and somebody loses. Uh, this isn't a game where we have to keep a score. This isn't a game where we have a certain number of tries to get through the game. Um, and it's a game that works quite well with people who know each other well, because there's, you end up talking about things you wouldn't normally talk about. But it's also a game that works quite well for strangers and people you don't know. Uh, I will paste a link to the PDF version that you can print out and play on your own. Um, as well. Um, so the game was developed in 2015 at the World Scout Chamboree in Japan, where there were 30,000 uh, teenagers from around the world in, in one place. It's a good opportunity to try a game out like this and see what works for people and, and tweak the topics and get things right. So these are the board get these are the boards we made for an event we did in September. So it was the first face-to-face -face scouting event we were running since the start of the pandemic. But uh, we, we had a small budget to print these boards and print the cards. And we, we were able to put together a few sets for that day, but we didn't just want to work on that day. We wanted to be able to give 
uh, everybody in the movement a chance to play the game. So one of the other things I've been doing in Scout South Africa is trying to encourage all our volunteers to use our technology more efficiently. We have a, um, a Microsoft 365 license and that's the platform we use for email and for file sharing and everything else. So I've been trying to encourage people to use SharePoint properly, to use Power Apps, to use OneDrive, to, to really get into the technology that we're paying for and use it better. So uh, with a bit of help from some people on our team, we, we put together an app um, to take that, that paper game in, uh, onto, onto our phones. So we needed the app to work offline. We needed the app to work the same way as the paper game as far as we could. Uh, we needed to track how long the game is played for because most of the time we're on a camp or we're at a scout meeting where we do have limited time. So we need to be able to tell people to stop playing at a point. Uh, we wanted to be able to change the topics easily. So if there was a special event or something that was current in the news, we, we needed to be able to do that. And for myself, I wanted to be able to get feedback from the players after they played the game. So uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to launch Edge now and take us into the game. So um, this is the, there's there's six screens. I'm going to take us through the demo and then we can come back and look at what what's going on under the hood here. So uh, this is the starting screen, um, and we have the rules. Just a short recap of the rules, and this is using the, the tutorial screen, standard screen type, um, which is a very useful screen to have. So this just takes you through the very basics of the rules, what it's for. Um, and the idea also when you use this app is that you would have somebody with you. So you, the, this works best in small groups, sort of six to 10 people. And we, we like to have a facilitator watching the conversation just to make sure that everybody is involved, um, nobody's being pushed aside or nobody's being forced to speak where they don't feel comfortable and that everybody's respecting each other's points of view. So this is just a short recap of how things work for, for people when they start playing. And then we have the option of a 10 minute game Time is limited, but but really to have a good discussion, we need it. You, you want to play for 30 minutes. So we have either of those. When I click this button, it's obviously going to set a timer and it's going to take me to the next screen where I can pick the topic. So this is the list of topics that was worked out by um, the, the that was workshopped at the Jamboree in 2015. Um, and they, there's a couple of different themes and there's a a, a, a number of topics you can pick from. What we did for that event that we ran in September was we actually uh, spoke to the teams. We, we sent a, uh, an office form out to the teams who were going to be there and we asked them to give us topics they wanted to talk about. And I replaced this collection with a collection of topics that they'd asked for, which was really interesting because um, obviously when they came to the base, they looked for the topics that they'd suggested and they had conversations with their, their teams that they were really interested in. So I'm going to pick, seeing as it's January and, and down here at least it's the middle of summer and I'm still a little bit in holiday mode, I'm going to pick holidays. Now what's happened is we've gone to the next screen. There's a time accounting down just to make sure I stay on track. At the top of the page, it reminds me what the theme is and this is my card. So the first person who's playing would get this instruction. So how would your ancestors have seen holidays? How was life 200 years ago or more? What did your great, great, great grandparents know about the topic? So what, what this card is doing is it's asking you as the player to talk about this topic, but it's giving you some direction because if, if you don't have that direction and you just sit down with people and you say, well, what do you think of this? It's very hard to get things going and, and get a discussion happening. So this is just a way of... of so at this point, um, Peter, at this point, yeah. am I, I'm sort of saying, oh, well, 200 years ago, well, my ancestors were in Ireland and they, you know, holidays would have been like whatever holidays would have been in Ireland many many years ago they might only they might have only had one day of holiday 
you know, or one, you know, they might have had limited holidays in normal circumstances. Yeah. So, and, and, and the idea about that is that that's, that then opens up uh, people to respond, especially if you think of a, a multicultural situation where um, my family has a, a different background and, and would have been doing something very different 200 years ago. So, so that's the idea is it's, it's, it's a starting point to help you start talking about these things and also not necessarily about tackling them head on. You know, so, so, so in saying that, you, you've given us something interesting to think about. I'm just letting the timer run down just to yeah. show you what happens when the timer runs. So, so when I was reviewing this, uh, Peter, I, I, because I wasn't reviewing it at the same pace as the, the discussions were supposed to run, I wasn't sure... Um, I wasn't sure how it was going to behave at the end of the minute. I just kept on pressing for the next card. Yeah. So, so, and, and that's why I wanted to run the clock down because as I said, this isn't a game w which is about somebody winning or about scoring points. And at the end of your turn, I don't want to take the phone away from you and say, well, Rory, you take your two minutes. I don't want to hear from you because at the end of two minutes, you might be in the middle of something very important. Uh, yeah. The timer is just really for the speaker to know how much time they, they've taken. Um, so the idea then is that either you would pass, if we're standing in a circle, you would uh, pass the phone to the person next to you, or if yeah. what you've said has really made an impact on someone, they can put their hand up and ask to, to follow on from you. Okay. And, and so can I ask some random questions then? So, where is the data? Do you know you said you changed the questions? Is that because the data is living inside SharePoint or, you know, for... Uh, so so because, uh, because we are hoping that people will be taking these, uh, playing this game on camps and in all yeah. sorts of places, yeah. it's in a collection. So we've okay. got three collections in the app. So um, it's kind of hard-coded into the app. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, so the idea is as long as you've loaded the app once... Um, before oh, you okay. go out of the Okay, area so was... they load the app once and the data originally comes from where? Uh, from an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. So, so no, but it is hard-coded in, in the app. So the first time you load the app, it's, it's, it's in a collection yeah. in, in the app. So, okay. Um, well, that's good. So we now press for the next player's card. And now the card changes colour. So this is just... The, the orange cards are starting cards and green cards are a responding card. So this card says, ask the speaker an, an open-ended question. So, and then it's got a little tip that says an open-ended question cannot be answered with a yes or no answer. Okay. Um, so this would be the, the way the next person who's following on from you would respond to what you've said. Um, so... so Go on then. So to do with holiday, ask me an open question then. Is it just a rattler? Go for it. Uh, so, so Rory, you, you said um, your your ancestors might might have only had one or two uh, holidays uh, a year. Do you know? Um... <laughs> sorry, I put me on the spot here, but that's no, good. no. That's sorry, so 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 it's it's so if it's my go then somebody else asks me some within the yes, circle right. ask me a question and i i've just told them hey you've got to ask me an open question and then yeah, so you would so the idea also is that you would pass the phone to them um because the the basic rule then is if you've got the phone you're you're speaking just so that you can control the, the conversation okay. so yeah, okay you would pass the phone to me and i would say well it's very interesting. You say your, your family would have only had one or two holidays. Do, do you know what sort of things they would have done? Okay. Yeah. On those days. Yeah. Well, they're from Ireland. So they probably would have done um, uh, the kind of, you know, they do those um, things made out of ice. And they do these ice sculptures. Well, in Ireland, I think they used to do them out of potatoes. They would take a large potato and they would probably uh, make it look like uh, an icicle or something. No, I don't know, but it is interesting to think about what they would have done. But this, this, yeah, when I first saw the app, I, I couldn't visualize how to use it because I didn't see it in context. But this is really interesting to see, um, to see how it would work. 
So now we get to the point where you presumably press the next player's card. Yeah. And so I we pass... pass on to the next player. Yeah. And what it's doing now is it shuffles the deck um, and pulls another card out of the deck. Um, and this starts the conversation again. So, so, so it's just to take us in a different direction on the same topic. So, um, okay. Strange time. And, and could you put it about the topic in 10 years' time? Oh, and I could say, oh, well, actually, um, I think that people will be going on holiday to the centre of the universe because it's a little bit warmer uh, and uh, and so on. Or they may be far more likely they'll be trying to go to Mars or something. But uh, but yeah, it's but it's it's quite it is in, of itself open ended. And so the game just kind of keeps rolling on through this series of questions for the period of time that you've set. Yes. And, and then when the timer, when the timer runs down, there is a, a, um, a label across the middle of the screen that says, I think it says time's up, yeah. which will become visible when, when the, the whole game timer runs down to zero. Okay. Um, and in the top right hand side there, you've got the little play icon. What does that do? So I had that as a, as a, as a close icon and the, one of the people who reviewed the app with me said, no, we shouldn't, we shouldn't say close because we want people to carry on the conversation. So okay. what that does is that ends the game and it pulls up a link to a, um, uh, an office form. Nice. Uh, so that the, the, the team who's just played the game can scan that with their phone and give us, give us some feedback on, on how it works. And then it gives us a button to, to go back to the start. Fascinating. Um, so, so here is, I mean, we, we, we only had a few responses, but, you know, here are the answers. Yes. I mean, this is a similar to Leo's survey, asking the yeah. same kind of questions. How old are yeah. you? What were you doing? Did you enjoy it? And, and that's that sort of thing. Um, shall, so, shall we see what Leo thinks of this? And, and yeah, Pranav, yeah. Pranav, did you want to... Um, uh, have we got any kids on on this? What do they think of what they've just seen? Yeah, I'm absolutely loving this. I think it's quite good. Um, I and I I find it absolutely fascinating. I love the fact that this game is bigger than Power Apps. It is just Power Apps facilitating something much bigger, much more important than Power Apps. It is just, but without it, it would be more difficult without Power Apps, but it is, so it's just a tool. And we should think about Power Apps as being just a tool. It's not, it is not everything. Um, so from a technical point of view, what were the challenges on this app? So the, the first thing was I, I had a PDF file with, with all of the, the cards, so all of the text, and all of the graphics. And um, it was quite easy to extract the graphics. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure you know that if, if you open a PDF file in Word, you can then save, a, as long as the document isn't too complex, you can save down the, you can save out the images. So, so that's where I got all of the, the graphics yeah. from, was by opening the PDF file. Yeah, yeah. The, the problem with PDFs is very often, if they've been done in, in a, a desktop publishing suite, the text is gibberish. It's, it's either vectorized text or each, each letter is its own box. And Word can't cope with that. Um, so you end up, we, we ended up having to retype all of the text. Yeah. But I was working with a team and I just put this shared document up and I asked everybody to pick a, a deck of cards and fill it in for me. And that's, yeah. that's what they did within um, an afternoon. Yeah. Three people had pulled all of these in for me. Um, so that was the, the, the first challenge. The, the second thing was uh, really just um, that I had not been using Power Apps for that long and, and I had to figure out how collections work. Yeah. Um, so, so this was my first time really playing with, with collections. And um, it, it, 
that took a bit of a bit of fiddling, but it, it came together quite nicely. So, um, sorry, I just want to. Uh, so just on on start, and I know this is not yeah. the preferred way of doing things anymore, but but this is where we're loading everything in. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, look, these these are quite small collections anyway, so so it's, it's, just it's okay. So you've got two clear collects there. Yeah, I've got three. I've got, uh, I've uh, got okay. three separate collections. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So we've got the green cards and the orange cards. Yeah, and at the bottom we've got all the topics. Yeah, brilliant, fascinating. So, um. Oh, I love this. I'd be really interested to hear what April thinks of this, um, if if she's uh, if she's able. Um, one of the screens I really like was the rules screen. Um, you able to show the you of the how to play screen. Uh, it's the one where you can you kind of yeah you scroll between them. I thought it was fascinating. Yeah, so, so I mean, this is one of the um, it is, isn't it's one it? Of the preset screen types, but it's not one that gets used often. Um, yeah. Show us that. And, and so cl click on the arrow to the right there. Yeah. So what the arrow okay. does is it it's um, okay incrementing yeah. a Guide variable step. called guide step. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, okay. And then what's in the box then? What is in like with words? If you click on the box there, then we're, we've got a. Oh, it's not even a. It's not even a gal. It's not even a gallery, is it? It's just a. Text no, box. it's not. It's it's. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it just uses the first. Um, you know, the first item within a collection, and then the 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 thing from yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. Still looks really nice though. I'm just looking for the right control for it. Um... Yeah. It's uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, tutorial navigator, I think, is yeah. Yeah, but the navigator, tutorial the... navigator yeah. um, arrow is actually where all of the, the logic lives. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's the step number and the, the text that gets displayed, and then the image you want to display with it yeah. are all set in in the. Um, yes. Yeah. So it's it's a it's like I say it's it's a really useful um, pre built. Um, standard standard screen type that doesn't get used a lot but it's it's really helpful for this kind of thing and and how many apps did you build before you did this um so i had built a couple of um three screen apps for uh for stock take at work really so so i'm an architect during the day and we had to survey a building and, and give the owner accounts for the furniture. So I built a, a little three screen app that does that. And I then built a more complicated version of that, that for, for doing surveys. Um, and that was really it before this. So I built those two. Uh, I, I played around a lot more with Power Automate and, um, and the other parts of the 365 platform. This is sort of the, the third app I've That's just, that blows my mind. That's amazing. April, have we got you there? Yes, sorry about that. I was trying to find, find the mute and then I had to take care of my cat who needed out in the office. <laughs> I just scratch it at the door. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love, first of all, just the, the use case, you know, it's definitely something we, we need these days, right? To be able to, to build common ground and with you know COVID and everything, but the, the, the use of the screen template, and I love that you pointed that out because there's still, I think a lot of people still don't know that you know we have those templates available. We don't have to reinvent the wheel um, to be able to do these kind of guided tutorial um, type approach and you know excellent use of, of collections and everything as well. I mean, we really love the app. And so this was Peter's, was it your third app? Yeah, probably our third app. That's amazing. April, yeah. you've got to get him on the community call. It's blown yeah, away. Absolutely. This would be great got to see you on the Power Apps community call. I love this. I love it. Uh, uh, Peter, are there any other bits, any challenges within this that you'd want to show us? I actually thought your purse game survey screen was really interesting. I, I suspect it's just a straight QR code 
Um, and then how do people, if people click on it, on select, what's the on select of that then? Um, um, I, I, uh, I can't remember whether I coded it that ah, way. Cool. Yeah, no, I did. Yeah. So the yeah. answer that if, if you were to tap it, it just launches the, the short yeah. code for, yeah. for that. Um, and similarly, the one at the bottom probably does the same thing as well. Oh, no, it doesn't. No, yeah. Yeah. No, no, that takes yeah. back to home. Yeah. Sorry. So I, I see it signed me out here. So it's going to sign back in. Um, and yeah, I mean, and, and the, the, the QR code is when, when you set up a form, um, you, get, you get the QR code here. And you're able to share it straight from them. so that's form brilliant. gives you the qr code and it lets you put a shortened url in as well um, and so when you get the q when you download the qr code you're downloading an image by the sounds of things yeah it's a i think it's a png okay um, yeah yeah i mean it would make sense for it to be a png rather than a jpeg yeah. yeah it's a png which which is just inserted in here it's it's just an image brilliant i love it I've loved both of these uh, apps this evening. Um, it's great. Um, oh, we've got a lot to, um, yeah, we've got a lot to live up to next uh, month, um, Peter and Leo and Pranav. I hope you've got something cooking there. Actually, do you know what? Do you know what? I'm going to show you one of my apps. Is that all right? It's my show. <laughs> I'm going to show you one of my apps. I'm working on this, and I don't know what to do with it, but I'll show it you anyway. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Share, share, right? And I'm going to head off to uh, my tenant. Anything could be on the screen. Okay. I was busy tweeting stuff out here. So, uh, and if I head up to solutions and I'm going to have to learn in, I've got this idea. I want, I really, really, really want to make an app that, um, that, where we can express the how how we can teach people i think that's a bit like what you're thinking peter about how you teach people and so on I, and i wanted to do something really really generic um that wasn't going to change too much so i went for the periodic table so i thought really do you know what it's fair i don't think the periodic table is going to change an awful lot between now and next week um so unless unless leo is going to so what Someone i did was could just out to the blue find a weird element Le i love the periodic it, table by the is way is it <laughs> leonoleum um but yes leonoleum uh, peter van strosium <laughs> so i nah, was i was met I, I was messing around with this and i was thinking could i create a periodic table using this so it is a it's it's a gallery um i can show the element name which is kind of fun um because sometimes you want the h and sometimes you want this that's kind of nice um i also you know the element type makes a difference i don't know what a transition metal is but it's a thing um and you got alkali so metals metal. and so on um and i thought this was interesting as well because you've got the element state here um so this this tells you whether it's a solid or a gas and so on so you've got helium's a gas etc etc and you've got some What's this one? Oh, yeah, the little symbol for liquid. That should be, well, you would think that um, I'm looking for um, uh, mercury. Let me just see if I can find mercury. Show element name. There's mercury. Look, that's got a weird name. Look at it. HG is mercury. Make any sense. Um, that's because the chemical symbol is the same in every language, but the chemical name isn't. But so the chemical symbol might mean something else in a different language, which makes more sense. So, so what you can do is they, they, um, on the, um, on the website that, I, that it connects to, um, I'm just going to, uh, you can, you can, it's got all the images associated with those. Do you think this is cool? <laughs> oh, wow. 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 So I, I didn't actually say, put any of those images, I didn't put those images in. I'm, they're just on the internet. And, um, really? but what you can do is you can actually select one of them. So, um, let me have a look at Mercury now. Where's Mercury? Is that that one? mercury and then what i can do is i can and actually what i was this is my little project you see learn more right and i've got oh no not that one that one there learn more and i've got this idea that we might be able as a community to kind of crowdsource different levels of ways of describing the same thing so you've got an easy one you've got a medium one uh that's for um, peter 
and then a really, really difficult one for Leo. And then he could tell dad, <laughs> he can tell dad that the easy one. But the idea is that maybe you could make an app that would a be usable by different people that were not a young, old or whatever, or, you know, that they're really young. And also, I'd really love to make it multilingual. So can you imagine how cool it would be to make a periodic table app that was for three different levels of people and was in in 50 languages? I think that would be really cool. And you can do stuff like you can like highlight things. If I get rid of the images, you can kind of highlight the different groups and so on. So mm-hmm. apparently they mean something in um, chemistry and so on. So that is my little um that is my little project at the moment. Oh, and by the way, oh, and so you can launch it and you can actually head off to this place over here. But the whole thing, none of this data, uh, all the data is in a model driven app. So if you actually go and play the app, all of this data is living inside a this is my data source. I'm using Dataverse as a data source to drive everything that's here. So how cool is that? So there's Helium. Um, uh and I'm going to say, oh, well, I'm going to do explanation easy. I'm going to say, uh, Leo has a really large left foot. <laughs> and then Peter, Peter doesn't go out as he is made of tissue tissue paper and we need, I think we need to have a previous game mode or a game about I mean, appear, to talk about difficult subjects if it i think that's what we need rains, at the and we'll disappear if it rains right okay so so i've 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 updated the record right so here's my um so i should be able to uh upload i uh, do this again <laughs> i should be able to fire this up again right and then I should be able to select helium, right? Helium. And I should be able to learn more. I think this is the right one. Oh, no, it's the wrong one. Yeah. It's this one here. It's just this It's this one here. Look. Look! <laughs> <laughs> this is what we should be using Dataverse for. This is what we should... <laughs> but also, look at this. Watch this. So, um, Facebook, um, and we'll do um, Urban... Uh, ban sketches. So what you can do is you can go uh, onto. I like urban sketches. They just sketch, you know, things and places and God knows what. So let me have a look. So for example, you can go into these things. They've taken these, um, and you can. What you can do is you can go and copy image address, and then what you can do is you can go back into this sort of thing here, and you. I'm actually in the wrong thing here. Uh, periodic table and what I can do is I can paste in an image here might work it probably won't work actually but essentially what you can do is you can go into these things I don't think it'll work let's just see if that works we're here we're here now anyway um but the idea is that you can also add your own images into the app as well so if I refresh this then it might work a 50 50 probably won't work um but hopefully, if I click on this one here and then go learn more, maybe I'll get an image. If that is cool, that is cool. I'm happy with that. Um, so at this point in time, I feel that I'm going to stop sharing because I'm just going to go off on one. Um, uh, I'm not sharing. Oh crumbs! How do you stop sharing on this thing? I don't know. You press the stop ah, there it is. There's a button for stop sharing. <laughs> Good. That takes us to the end of um, that takes us to the end of the Power Apps for Kids January 2022 session. I've really, really enjoyed it. I'm starting to enjoy the Power Apps for Kids things more. I feel like there's less pressure now, and I think we should always hold on to that idea that we should enjoy power apps we should you know okay it'll go wrong from time to time but we should really try and just enjoy it and um and so today has been i've really really enjoyed the session 
and the the wonderful apps that April and Peter have been able to show us. And I, I really think, Peter, if you can get onto the community call with Microsoft, I think they would love to see what you've done here. I think it's fantastic. So, um, you know, that would be be great. And I'm sure that the other uh, scouting communities would be really interested in it as well. So um, uh, I'd suggest you hook up with uh, April and um, and see if you can uh, do that one day. Lovely. Well, Peter, uh, Leo, any comments? All good. Well, All good. Us, I think. We'll see each other again uh, next month, I think. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, everyone. And we will see you again. Uh, well, I'm going to say not next, say next, not next month, but will be a, a date to be confirmed in the future. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Okay. See you next time. Bye. Bye.